Good morning. I want to welcome all of you here today and online. Um, I'm filling in, so basically I'm going to just kind of read from this and hope I do it right. So uh, we have announcements in the bulletin. Please look at those. And uh, let's see. One to remember is Tuesday, 9 o'clock, sewing group. And Wednesday at 7.30 a.m., men's breakfast at family table. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Okay, so correct that. It should be 7 o'clock, uh, Wednesday morning, 7 o'clock, men's breakfast at family table. Okay. Let's see. And the young kids have hot cocoa cups for sale in the back of the sanctuary. So uh, please take a look at those and support them. It's a free will offering going toward the warm clothing closet at Fairview. Uh, January is Mental Health Month, so our mental health team has a short message they'd like to share with you. So if you'd please watch on the screen. Happy New Year, church family. 
January is good mental health. I'm not here today to talk about mental illness. I'm going to be talking about what we all we all want to feel good physically and We will face challenges in our life, and we do those all the time. But with God's help, we can get through those. We can ask God for help, guidance. We can vent and be angry. He's heard it all, and he still loves us. So he is always there for us. When we do things for other people, we feel better. And we can even do small things for other people. We can show appreciation and respect for them. And we can pray for them. Everybody wants them. Our church family offers many activities here for personal growth, also for socialization, friendship, and for us to give us a way to serve others. Some of the examples of that is Ellen has an exercise group. We have Bible study coming up for the Anderson. We have singing in the choir, the bells, which we all enjoy this too, and they are always looking for new people. We have volunteer opportunities for missions. We have volunteer opportunities with Susie and Jason and the kids in the Lutheran's church. We have a men's group that eats out in the morning. We have a family table breakfast that eats out. We have several things. If none of those activities are things that you want to do and you have ideas, we always welcome them. We always want new ideas and ways to serve people. We want you to have a great new year in 2022. So um, let's celebrate January with good mental health. Thank you. We come this day, precious God, as people in need of your steadfast love. With you is a fountain of life. In your light we see light. We gather this day, water-changing God, as people looking for signs. With you is a fountain of life. In your light we see light. We worship this day, gifting God, as people who confess Jesus as our Lord. With you is the fountain of life. In your life, Good morning. My name is Ryan Christensen. It's good to be with you. I've been here uh, before, but not for worship. Um, it is good to be with you in person, online. Um, I'm on staff with the Iowa Conference uh, of the United Methodist Church, and uh, I have the best job in the world. I get to be with churches across the state, uh, mostly as you discover where you are, uh, where God's leading you, or some steps to get there. And on occasion, I guess, get to be a guest preacher. So it's good to be with you. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. We'll pause for a silent time of prayer, and then 
we'll, we'll lift up our prayers together. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, we gather this day trusting, believing, God, that you who are the author of life, the one who gifted all of creation, God, you are with us here in worship. God, we confess that there are times when we get distracted by all that's going on, all that's buzzing in our pockets, all the things that would take us away from, from recognizing your powerful presence among us. God, we pray that you would shake open our minds, open our ears, open our hearts, that we would hear you, that we would experience you, that we would be uplifted by you in this time of worship. God, you, you receive our prayers before we can even pray them. God, we lift those prayers to you. God, you are almighty, all-powerful, you are the great physician. God, we pray that you would move among us in those places particularly that we prayed. We would lift up Pastor Terry in his renewal leave and pray that he would be renewed in you. We lift up the, the leaders, the people of this church. We lift up every person here and online, God. Bind them by your spirit. God, all these things we pray in Jesus' holy name, even as we lift up the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be measured and found acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Christensen, and it's great to, to be with you uh, again. You know, it's, it's uh, been a while. I, I got to be a part of uh, what your church was doing. If you took the Congregation Assessment Tool, the CAT survey way back when, I got to uh, present the results uh, of that to some of the leaders and, and probably wrote something up beyond that. Um, I moved. I used to live in, in Sioux City, so I uh, considered myself a Western Iowa, Northwest Iowa person, but we just moved to Indianola. So on the drive here yesterday, Olivia counted 12 cars. So I am thankful you are here and not in a ditch, or if you're online, you, you stayed warm, stayed safe, or wherever you are, we're, we're glad you're here. You know, I, I am thankful for you, the church. Um, you know, I get to work with Susie Oberding, and, and she's part of a CAT team, so she is headed to Mount Air later today to, to do a, a CAT presentation. But as I've heard about the work that you're doing, even in a pandemic, right, who here before this last stretch has led a church through a pandemic before? There's no hands shown down here, right? So I am thankful that even as you keep your eye focused on God's mission for us, making disciples, transforming the world, you're figuring out new ways to do that in person, online. I've heard about some of your bridge events. You've got a family game night coming up. Just trying to figure out how to sustain relationships in the midst of all the stuff that's going on. So I am, I am thankful for you. I really think I do have the most fun job in the world. I, I get to visit with folks across the state and, um, you know, try to get a sense of where God might be moving and helping folks together take a step to get there. And so it's good to be with you today. You know, it's, it's good to be in a gathering. Gathering together has changed a bit in the last couple years. I don't know if your gatherings are a bit like my gatherings, but they're, they're just different. And, and so I've been thinking about gathering a whole lot in the last few months. So I'm going to think about how when a shark, a bear, and Jesus gather together. And uh, this is not a joke. It's my sermon. You are allowed to laugh. So Christmas, we're, we're halfway through January. How many of you still have a Christmas gathering yet to come? A few of you, a few of you. I think we have wrapped up, as of a, a week ago, we wrapped up our last Christmas gathering. And, and from what I've heard, it's a mixed bag, right? Sometimes everybody's able to get together, but not always this year. Uh, if you have somebody trying to fly, good luck with that. Traveling state to state, who knows? Getting together has gotten harder. So my mother, who lives in Hartley, said, you sons are in charge of it this year, so the three of us sons are like, all right, we'll do this. And so by doing that, I decided I was in charge. So texting and calling, I thought, let's collaborate. Let's figure out something where we can all get together and all have fun. I tell you, I put a lot of effort and work into this. I stocked up on cleaning wipes. I had every kind of mask. We text. We made calls. I got... Uh, all kinds of crackers, gluten-free options, dairy-free options. I got meat that wasn't even meat for our Christmas gathering. Christmas at the Christiansons was going to be awesome. And then there came a point early December where we all got stressed. And, and I don't know if this happened to you, but I got a text from one of my siblings, and I just said, that's it. I'm done planning. We're all going to mom and dad's. Send, right? That's, that's as angry as I get. Send, right? And, and that's it. I was done planning. Well, it, it, we still gathered, some of us. There was a COVID exposure. My kids got pink eye, so that delayed us a day. And did I mention I stocked up on gluten-free crackers? Let's have lunch after this. We're still working through those. I tell you, if Facebook feeds are any indication, it really is a mixed bag this year. Gathering has become a hard thing. Gathering as a church, gathering as a family, being together has gotten hard. I've heard that we're in a pandemic of anger. Perhaps you've felt that. Perhaps you've seen that in your family, at work, or at church. Every week, I learn of a new friend that's, that's gotten separated. 
If you read the comments section on so many church or school posts, it's about whether to mask or not. There's a civil war going on. School boards are packed, but they're trying to argue about what to read or what mandate to enforce or not. And, and churches themselves seem to have become battlegrounds as well, as, as well. And it's my way or the highway. If I don't get my way, I leave. I don't know if you've read that, but the Reformed Church is splitting again, right? How many Reformed Churches are there in, in uh, Carroll? Getting together as family, work, church has gotten hard. As much as we'd like our, our family, our friends, our church to think about everything the way that we do, that's just not life. So how do we live life well in this time? So I've been paying attention to, to gathering, especially the last uh, few months as I read through Scripture. And I'm going to share a few of those with you. And, and I am amazed as, I, as I've been sensitive to that. As Jesus gathers, it gets interesting. So just this last week, I was reading through Mark chapter 1, and uh, Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, has been casting out uh, unclean spirits, healing people, and then he gathers with some folks for, for dinner. And, and things happen quickly. And Mark 3, Jesus goes back to his hometown. People have crowded in this house. And I'll start in verse 20. Jesus entered a house. A crowd gathered again so that it was impossible for him and his followers even to eat, right? I, I think about that. To have a crowd like that is a little unusual these days, but they're, they're packing the house, and Jesus is doing awesome things. When his family, when Jesus' family heard what was happening, they came to take control of him. They were saying he's out of his mind. I love it, right? So those who grew up with Jesus, this isn't the sweet baby Jesus fall, falling asleep in the hay. This is the Jesus that is now casting out demons. He's changing the world, and, and his, his mother and brothers perform a little intervention. Talk about awkward family gathering. We see another gathering in John uh, chapter 2, and, and that's one of the main theme scriptures for this week. John chapter 2, perhaps you, you, you remember this. It's Jesus' first uh, miracle in the Gospel of John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They don't have any wine. Jesus replied, Woman. He, he's kind of direct there, right? Woman, what does this have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. And then his mother just goes on without him and kind of ignores him. His mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby were six stone water jars used for the Jewish cleansing ritual. Each was able to hold about 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to his servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some from them and take it to the head waiter. And, and they did. The head waiter tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The head waiter called the groom and said, Everyone serves good wine at first. They bring out the second-rate wine only when the guests are drinking freely. But you kept the good wine until now. This was the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. I love that story, right? Because Jesus is, is doing awesome things. The world, the disciples, see God's power at work in Jesus. But also, it's another awkward family gathering with Jesus and his mother. And just there at that party, right? Even in Bible times, gathering was, was hard. And, and uh, yeah. I, I've been a paying attention to this, uh, that, that Jesus is no stranger to mixed bag gatherings. He, he is not the one who has the easiest get-togethers. I, I think about the Last Supper, right, as he's reaching into the bowl and, and somebody asks, who's going to betray me? And he's pretty blunt. He says, well, it's you, Judas. Go ahead and go off and do what you're going to do. We read throughout the Bible, 
keys about getting together, about gathering together, when it's hard. 1 Corinthians 13, right? That passage that we use at weddings, the love chapter, it's not talking about marriage, it's talking about how a church gets together. Faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. And Matthew 18, right? That's, that's the key of how we live life together. When two or more are gathered, and, and, and Jesus there isn't talking about worship, he's talking about how we work through differences. Let me back up a bit. In, in Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, If your brother or sister sins against you, go and correct them when you are alone together. If they listen to you, then you've won over your brother or sister. Right? So the first step if, with, with gathering, with conflict, with communication, just go straight to that person. If they won't listen, take up one or two others so that every word may be established by the, the mouth of two or three witnesses. If you can't get there by yourself, maybe take somebody just to help Help the conversation happen. Skipping ahead a few verses, then again, I assure you that two or three, when if two or three of you on earth agree about anything you ask, then my Father who is in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. So when we're having issues with each other, when, when we gather together, we trust and believe that as we go and talk with that other person, In those mixed bad conversations that are hard, God's Spirit, Jesus, is right there with us. It's hard work, but they're crucial conversations as we gather together. I I think about as I watch the news, as I watch our churches, as I watch us and families at work across the country doing what we're doing, I think, what if the church became a place where we became really good at having those hard conversations, right? Working through disagreements. What if we as the church, as Christians, became incubators for living a, a holy life of working through difference, of navigating differences really well? And I think that would be awesome. So one of the things I get to do is, is be a part of a, con, uh, a conflict transformation teaching team. And I'm thankful that the Carroll Church is hosting one of those teaching sessions here February 26th. And if you haven't already heard about it, there's more information that will be coming out. And, and so I, I invite you to sign up for that. You have an insert, and I'm going to give you like three minutes of something we'll talk about that day. So you'll get a primer. So I, I appreciate each of us comes with different styles, different ways of approaching conflict. And, and on this chart, you've got it on the screen or you've got the handout, uh, the different axes, left and right, will think about how much we focus on tasks. Up and down would say how much we focus on relationships. So up and right would say there are some of us, when we get into the, the heat of battle as we're wrestling with, with something and, and we have different ideas than another person, we would hold on to both ideas and relationships. I think I am, perhaps, my natural posture is to be up there at the cooperating uh, area. That's the upper right, high relationships, high tasks, and and, uh, uh, some of you might be there as well. As as you're trying to work through things, as, as the heat is on, as you're disagreeing with somebody, you say, let's keep working on this and let's stick together as we go through this. I think most church work needs to happen there where we cooperate. And, and sometimes, uh, I, I didn't get the, the, the graphic with animals, but this would be the owl who can pull and see all the directions, see all the people. But if you go to the other end, where in, in conflict, so many of us want to pull back that out of self-protection, out of self-care, uh, when, when conflict happens, we are like a turtle and we pull ourselves back in. We, we don't want to worry about relationships or, or the task, just everybody, everything, leave me alone. So maybe you're a, a, a turtle. Up and to the left are people that will, will ignore relationships and just focus on task. We need to get this room painted. And I don't care if anybody agrees with me, we're going to paint the room this color. And those are the sharks. On the opposite end of that, the lower right, are going to be the harmonizers. And these are the folks that when conflict happens, they just want everybody to be happy and you just let go of the agenda, let go of the tasks that need to be done. You know, when it comes to worship, we just want everybody to be happy and we're not going to make the change. Some of us are teddy bears, the harmonizers. And in the middle, you you, you cooperate, um, you compromise, and those are people who are sly as foxes. 
And, and so whenever we gather together, we are going to be a mixed bag of all these different people. And Jesus is here in the midst of all of that with us. Right? We need the sharks. The sharks who are focused on task. Right? If the church is on fire, you don't want somebody asking if I really feel like I'm happy today. You just need us to take action. And there are times also, if there has been harm that's been done, we need to back up and, and, and see how people are doing. There are times when, when we need to be turtles and just kind of back off. And as I mentioned earlier, we are our best when most of the church business happens up in that, up in that upper right quadrant. So I'm curious, which are you? Are you, are you a, let's, if, if you're brave, how many of you think you're sharks? Boom. A few of you? Teddy bears, bottom right. Just make sure everybody's happy. Owls, upper right corner. We're going to work through this and, and keep focus on task and relationships, a few of you. Fox, turtle. The turtles are like, don't make me raise my hand. That's the worst thing in the world. So if you want to know more, there, there are online inventories, Craybill, Conflict, Styles, and, and uh, you know, some good assessments. We'll do this also as part of that that survey. It's, so I think part of getting together in these mixed bag relationships, part of gathering in the world today is being aware of who we are, what do we come with, and also what is the situation, what are the people we're with need, right? I would admit with the stress of Christmas, I shifted away from being that, that cooperating, that upper right quadrant, down to the sides. And, and uh, that happens, we, we might make a shift over time. One more thing, and this is just an easy takeaway. My, my hope is that we just, again, continue to, to live life, to, to get through conflict and, and gather well. So when it comes to communication, there are times when we should push the pause button. You know, I, I said I just created a text and I hit send. And, and um, if we are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, H-A-L-T, it's a good thing that we should halt our, our communication, Right? And you're going to say, in a pandemic, there, there is never a time when I'm not one of those. The pounds on my waist would say that I'm too often hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. So if you are those, and if you can't get out of those, do a Matthew 18 and say, hey, you know, I was thinking about sending this to a, my boss. Um, could you look over this with me, right? I, I crafted this angry email I was going to send to somebody, and, and I... And I was like, all right, I'm not going to send that today. It's a Friday. I'm super tired. So I sent it to my supervisor, Jay Johnson, if you know him. And he's like, Ryan, don't you send that today. So we rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. And then by the time that I sent it the Tuesday next week, I was able to more focus on the issues and not make it personal. And the person who responded took it as an issue thing and we worked it out, right? So if you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, don't make that grumpy call. Don't, don't have that comment in the parking lot. Halt. And, and we can all do this together. We are in the midst of a pandemic getting together, whether that's family, church, work. It's, it's a little challenging. Well, we can do this. In part, I think our families depend on this. Our work depends on this. And God knows our churches depend on us gathering well. We need to do this connecting and communicating well. All of us sharks, all of us bears, as we gather with Jesus. So I was, I was thinking and, and, and chatting with a friend of mine, Matthew, who, who was the chair of a board at a church. And, and uh, as we did this Crable conflict stuff in, in his church, he was very much a shark. When he, at, at work, he works at a hospital, and he, he gets to su supervise a lot of folks. And his mantra as, at work is, um, work at work and do your freaking job. And I don't know that he used those exact words, right? But when you're at work, you do your work, and when you're at church, do the work. And, and there was no messing around until it didn't work. And so we, we had one of these uh, conflict workshops, and, and he began to think about not all the time does he need to be a shark, but sometimes now when he goes into his meetings, he texts me and he says, you know what, 
People are people, and that's okay. And we laugh, but he is better. His work is better, and I would say his church is better because he is more intentional about how he is communicating with others. I love the ways that Jesus gathers, right? Whether it's Mark 3 and his family comes in and stages that intervention. Jesus, folks, he's out of his mind. We're going to take him home and talk to him. Or with, when he's at the wedding at, at Cana of Galilee, where his mom just comes up and says, Jesus, I know you can do this, and gives him a push into the limelight. Jesus gathers with interesting folks. I mean, Jesus is here with you and me. Sharks, bears, turtles, owls, foxes. Jesus is right here with us. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Gracious God, I give you thanks for each person here. Here in person, here online. Even as we gather in this time, in this space, God, you are here. Transform us. Transform this church. That we would not be locked into ourselves, but we would be open to you. In this mixed bag time of gathering, help us to be your church. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.